Okay, this is part two of the Aaron Brown situation. This is JP from New England, not New England Cop Chases, just Cop Chases. Um, we are in Keene, New Hampshire, home of Free Talk Live, home of liberty activism, and home of civil disobedience. Um, although some of the free staters and, and people in, in this town kind of irritate me, but I'm friends with a few. And they are good people, and they work their ass off trying to gain freedom for the general public and exposing public officials and their bullshit. So, part two, Aaron Brown. If uh, you saw the first video, I'll just give a, a, a quick summary of what's been going on. I got arrested March of last year, of 2017, for uh, filing a complaint on a cop named Aaron Brown. Aaron Brown then had his little cronies charge me with filing a false complaint and false swearing because I went to the police department and ended up filing a complaint on him because he moved me to an unreasonable distance um, which violated my right to record and he pushed me which is assault. Um, it was a complaint, not a criminal complaint against him. I was just complaining on him on his active duty which I have a right to do under New Hampshire v. Allard New Hampshire Supreme Court ruling. And I have a right to record him under Glick v. Conniff, um, U.S. First Circuit Court of Appeals ruling, the Glick decision, and the Gorek, Gorek v. Began and Ware Police Department decision, um, which they settled uh, with an undisclosed amount out of court, um, so they can all kiss my ass. So, this is the video or audio sit down with uh, Detective Aaron Brown who was charged and dismissed from the Manchester Police Department in April literally the week of my trial date and you can look at video one um, to get the whole story I have a uh, description of the links I have a uh, description of the news uh, the news thing on it and uh, what went down and if you want to see the PDFs on all that paperwork you can go to Cop Chases at Facebook, scroll down, I believe it's the, the very top case. I think I pinned it actually. So you can take a look there. So this is the audio video um, of Detective Aaron Brown being interviewed by his Sergeant Sanders and he had his union rep there with him. Um, <clears throat> and I want to point out two things before I stop the video. It's 19 minutes long. If it gets drawn out, I'll stop the video and um, well, the audio and I'll uh, go into some other things I want to cover. Anyways, there's two things. He pressed for the charges on me after filing a complaint. And number two, the thing that concerns me the most is he said, we're trained to deal with people like him. Um, don't quote me on it, but it's paraphrased, but that's basically what he said. So I'm going to play this audio, and um, I'm going to be making commentation in the middle. If you don't mind me jumping in saying, Bullshit! Punk-ass bitch! You're being charged criminally as a criminal. How does it feel to be unemployed? How does it feel to be a defendant? <laughs> Detective Aaron Brown of Manchester Police Department, how do you like being fired and then charged by your own chief? Fucking douchebag. Here you go. Okay, it's March 20th, 2017 at 12, 13 hours. <clears throat> Sergeant Sanders is here with uh, Detective Dubois uh, as a union representative for Detective Aaron Brown. If you guys could just uh, state your name and your badge number just so we have it for the record. Aaron? Aaron Brown, uh, D31. Boys, D46. And we're here to talk about uh, a complaint 17-3163 regarding uh, Matt Phillips, a.k.a. J.P. Freeman, on an incident that occurred March 2nd, 2017 at approximately 2100 hours on Main Street. I don't go by J.P. Freeman, I just go by J.P. <laughs> I got a few... Uh, uh, emails on what my full name is. My full name is Matthew John Paul Phillips. I wasn't born that way. 
that's my stepfather's last name, so I picked that name up. And uh, it used to be John Paul Matthew, and I'm not going to say the original name because I don't want to be associated with that family or that type of character. So I'll leave that family, that fam my biological name out. But they call me JP because that's my middle name, John fucking Paul. Okay, I'm not JB Freeman, I'm JP period. I, I have a right to call myself anything I want. Dickhead, I'm an asshole, Spongebob, who the fuck knows. But here you go. In Manchester. Um, <clears throat> before we get started, I'm going to read the uh, reverse Gary warning. <clears throat> so warning is to be used only when a member, employee of the Manchester Police Department is about to be questioned about possible criminal matters and it has been officially been determined that any self-incriminating statements made by the member slash employee will not be used against them in a criminal prosecution. This is to inform you that as a member of the member or employee of the Manchester Police Department, you are currently the subject of an internal investigation. I wish to question you regarding this investigation, which concerns the matter of Matthew Phillips. This questioning will concern administrative matters relating to the official business of the Manchester Police Department. I am not about to question you for the purposes of instituting a criminal prosecution against you. During the course of this questioning, even if you do disclose information that indicates you may be guilty of criminal conduct, neither your self-incriminating statements nor the fruits of any self-incriminating statements you make will be used against you in any criminal legal proceedings. Since this is an administrative investigation and any self-incriminating information you may disclose will not be used against you in a court of law, you are required to answer my questions fully and truthfully. The questions relate specifically and narrowly to the matter under investigation. If you refuse to answer my questions or if you attempt to provide false, untrue, or deliberately erroneous information or attempt to hamper the investigation in any way, this is itself a violation of the rules and regulations of the Manchester Police Department and you will become subject to potential polygraphs, disciplinary penalties, up to and including termination from employment. You'll be allowed union represent representation during this interview. Your union representative may act as your witness, but he may not resent you in a legal capacity or as counsel. Do you understand what I just explained to you? Yes. Do you have any questions concerning what I just explained to you? I want to stop there to point out and uh, let the viewers know that Sergeant Sanders, Du Bois, and Detective Aaron Brown, who is now charged criminally with some crimes and fired as of April of this year, they're all in the same unit and all served with each other for over 13 years. Um, this Sergeant Sanders douchebag who I am going to target and cross-examine the life out of him uh, on the stand, um, basically agreed to charging me on their self-idiotic determination of charging me with a false crime. Um, and this is the problem that we have with the accountability kind of and self-determination thing. Self-determination is against the law. Conflict of interest is against the law. I can't tell you how many cases in Supreme Court U.S. Supreme Court, state Supreme Court, um, look down on such matters. Um, Self-determination, when you file a complaint on someone, goes to the people that they serve with, friends that they serve with. For all I know, this guy was the best man at his wedding like three months earlier. There is no accountability there. And there needs to be, and there has to be, and something needs to be done about these criminal this criminal gang called the Blue Thin Lion. <clears throat> and he put down unlawful conduct. I want to sign right there. And Tom, if you could just sign as a witness. Yes, sir. So they're signing an affidavit of uh, things he, he, I guess the union rules. Um, when they uh, investigate a police officer, they have to have a union rep present. Of course, it's another detective. Um, totally biased to the whole situation. And if you notice, the sergeant actually called him Tom by first name, 
not by his badge number, not Mr. First Name Basis. So they know each other. Um, and this is the, the guy, the union rep that came with Detective Aaron Brown. I guess both of them have to sign an affidavit that they're there. I don't know why this is loading so slow, but it's annoying me. Come on, speed it up, you douchebags. Jeez, how, how much dead air is on this thing? Are they just siding shit? Alright, so the incident um, took place on March 2nd, 2017. It says by the complaint, approximately $2,100. That was a car stop you got you and the street crime members did on Main Street. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and, uh... All three of us have reviewed the video that Mr. Phillips uh, posted on YouTube, and uh, we all agree. And the, plus the video that he sent to me via email, and that all—that's all the same video we're talking about. They're all consistent with each other. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So just take me through what uh, what happened, you know, prior to that car stop, and what happened during the car stop. So prior to the car stop, we observed the uh, driver of the car engage in um, suspected illegal drug behavior at an address over off of uh, Elm Street. So we followed him, we ended up stopping him there. Um, when we stopped there... Okay, he just said that he observed some type of illegal acti activity to prompt to stop this young black man, yet during this whole thing, at the end, when they moved me all the way down to the end of the street and then surrounded me with three cops to make sure I didn't move um, when it's 27 degrees out, they actually let the guy go. So obviously they didn't catch him doing shit because they didn't find shit. Um, they sat there for literally 45 minutes straight, strong arming this poor kid, um, surrounded the dude, and basically they didn't want me to see or hear what they were doing because they were probably planning on planting shit on him because we already know he's a crooked cop he got a, he's getting arrested and charged he's already been fired with you heard you heard in video one what the chief said he said you know we fired him for a criminal activity on and off duty so this is a crooked a, a live crooked cop who doesn't want me to capture whatever they're doing there and the other two detectives are on the 91A um, which is the New Hampshire version of the New, uh, the Freedom of Information Act, those other two officers, because I will guarantee you all my life that they're crooked too, because they're scumbag ass wipes that like to go after, you know, young black males and try to scare the living daylights out of them to give them false information, plant shit on them, and lock somebody up for revenue purposes or and or steal his money for their own personal use. Notes to us, there was another vehicle, I guess, in front of the target vehicle. We stopped. That also stopped, at which point the uh, complainant here got out of it and then went over to the sidewalk where we were all doing our investigation. And then at some point, um, I didn't even realize it until we seen the video where I think I pick up on him walking towards us, and I didn't even realize he was there until about that point. Um, you know, I realized so obviously that he was videotaping us. I didn't really pay much attention to it until he started coming, you know, and then he got within probably four or five feet of us. Okay, first of all, I didn't come to four or five feet, as you will see in the video that I described in video one of the douchebag, uh, douche brown video. I walked towards them at the same time three people were walking on the sidewalks, regular citizens. So I walked by him simultaneously, and right at that point is when he beelined it to me. He came to me. I didn't go to him. I was walking on the grass around. I was not going toward him. So, again, this is the third fucking lie that I already caught this douchebag in. Hey, Detective Aaron Brown, you're a fucking liar. And so isn't your little sergeant little puss-ass bitch. 
Uh, so at that point, I decided to. Um, in a, Come on, dude. Introduce myself to him and let him know that um, it was not acceptable for him to be that close to us. And I even cited the reason, that being our safety. Um, I mean, I'm not allowed to be that close, but he literally allowed three people to walk right by him without marking it off. Police take notice. None of these things are going on. You did not want me to watch your hair, what the hell you were doing with this young black kid, because you're a fucking cocksucker. That's why. We can tell it's not just our safety, it's his safety as well as the uh, safety of the, you know, the target of our investigation. So I pointed to the driveway um, off of Main Street right across from West High School where the tennis courts are, um, which is, you know, about 90 to 100 feet away. And I told him that, um, you know, he was more than welcome, obviously, to videotape us. But he would have to do it from that distance, you know. Yeah, almost 200 so, yards. You know, so that everyone was safe. Um, we obviously took exception to that and, you know, argued about it and whatnot. Um, he did walk that down that, that area. Um, you know, he put up some resistance to that. But I followed with him to make sure he didn't go all the way down there. And once he was there, I, you know, I told him that was good. If he could just stay there and turn around and walk back to the end. So when you say put up some resistance, that what do you mean? He yeah, argued about it, you know, questioned why, um, why he had to do that. You know, he wasn't... Up obviously satisfied with my answer as far as, you know, safety concerns. Um, you know, he would occasionally stop walking, you know, which was evident in the video. He would stop and, you know, stop walking and argue some more. Um, but I just maintained my, um, you know, my officer safety presence and, you know, ordered him uh, probably a good four or five times to, to keep moving. Uh, and he would, I mean, he would put up a little resistance to it. Um, verbal, verbal resistance. Yep, verbal resistance. There was never, I mean, there was never any physical resistance on his part at all. Um, you know, there became a situation where, you know, he had to be physically controlled by me or anybody else. Um, he was just, you know, verbal protestations more or less. What was he using to videotape? It was a phone or a camera? No, it was like a, definitely a video camera, um, like a handheld video camera. Remember how big it was? It was like one you hold in your hand, like one, not, not a big one, but one of the smaller ones. Probably like... I don't know, the size of like a coffee mug or something, like one of those size ones. Had you had any previous contacts with uh, Mr. Phillips ever in your career? No, no, I didn't even know who he was, even until after the fact. Um, I learned of like who he was and, and, and what group he was associated with. But you've with. never stopped him before, I've never had any previous... After the fact, he learned what association he had and what group I belonged to. What group do I belong in? I'm the only one at that point, back then, Part of cop chases. The only one. I'm not linked to the free status, I'm not linked to FSP, and I dissociated myself from coplock.org because uh, the co found is a fucking snitch ass bitch and it likes to turn in people um, so it can catch lesser charge. And the co founder also does, does don't take a plea activism for over four years, but he took four pleas. So I'm not about to be associated with anybody like that. Now, Pete Ayer was part of it, I'll, I'm all for it, because he's he's of good standing with Liberty, not not a cop talker or, or a, uh, someone that um, turns people in um, that resulted in uh, prosecution. But this cop is out of his fucking mind, dude. Okay? Um, what association do I belong in? Why is he collectivizing me in a group? And um, verbal resistance, dude? No, I was giving you the law. Um, contact with him, no altercations with him, no arguments with him, nothing? Well, personally, no. I know other, other members of Street Crime had a problem with him. Um, I guess it was earlier, last year. But I personally didn't, I didn't even know who he was until, you know, until afterwards. Did he uh, ask? Did you hear that? He said, I know other people of the Street Crime Unit had a problem with him. I'm not sure if he's relating to the three idiots that were on Hooksit Road. Um, you can look that video up. Um, same thing. Two two undercover cops pulled over a truck that initially they had to let go. Um, um, I believe it was Battistelli was in charge of that little group of idiots. And there was a cop named Christian Horn who at that, who at that particular time got charged for two felony assaults down in Cape Cod. You can actually look that up. Um, apparently that was dismissed 
no wrong, no wrongdoing was done in the internal investigation. Manchester Police Department gave their own officer of a crime he committed way to hell in Massachusetts. Um, but yeah, that that video I believe is JP chases off a bunch of narco bitches or something like that. Uh, chases off a bunch of undercover narco bitches. I believe that's the title of that that video. Um, I actually flipped the guy off right in, in the, right in his face because he's a scum sucking jerk off. But apparently Aaron Brown, this illegal criminal cop, had big conversations about me after the fact, talking to his whole unit about me. So this is the problem with this bias and, uh, you know, making their, uh, their blood going every time they see us so they give us a hard time every time they see us. Because they gossip about us in a locker room like a bunch of little girls uh, in, in fifth grade. Because that's what they are. They're girls in fifth grade. Aaron. Did you for your name? He did. Did you give it to him? He did. Did you give him the badge, badge over? I did. He actually... The gentleman who was... He actually lied. He didn't give me his badge number. He just gave me his name. Stopped in the car. Well, for the purposes of this interview, we don't need a name. Um, did you have any contact with that person before? No. Did you have any idea uh, what that person's uh, disposition was going to be when you stopped them? No. I mean, we were the activity we saw was obviously strongly indicative of drug behavior, so we obviously knew that was going to be like you know a drug investigation. Um, the behavior in which we saw roadside was at an address where we've seen um, other drug behavior go on, so it wasn't uh, kind of like one of those things where we were just investigating something on a whim, let's say. Like, it was fairly substantiated that this was more than likely going to end up either an arrest or the seizure of a vehicle or something along those lines. But you didn't uh, know the person driving that car firsthand, had no previous contact with that person, you didn't know if this person was going to be uh, confrontational, violent. Anything like that? Right, yeah, no, we knew nothing. No previous about, knowledge about that? No, nothing, no, no prior knowledge prior to as far as what his demeanor would be here. You know, what the road he might take once uh, once we start our investigation as far as being cooperative or uncooperative. Okay, so um, you have the car stopped, and then Mr. Phillips, uh, it's, at one point you realize he's out there taping you, and you start to walk towards him and, and give him direction to, to move back? Yeah. How close was he, you said, when, the, when you first noticed him? How close was he to the, to the actual car stop? When I first noticed him, he was probably a good 10 or 20 feet away, which, I mean, I would obviously want him farther away, but at the time he wasn't really getting involved in anything, but then he started walking towards us where, you know, myself and all my partners were, as well as the uh, target of our investigation. Hold on a second. I'm actually going to make a, a part three on this just so people aren't watching this stupid stuff for like 19 minutes. Okay, I will start walking towards you, huh? Let's see. Let's check this out for a minute here. Okay, this is where I started seeing people come towards him. Um, it's at about... 2 minutes 14 seconds in the... In, uh, JP gets assaulted video. Okay, you see people coming. One, two, three, four civilians. I started going around. I went around the tree. Okay, now check check this out. I don't know if you can see on the camera. I walked by it. At the same time, these people are moving. And that's when he comes towards me. Look at the people walking. Right by him. Listen, I don't care if you do much, but you're not going to be this close. So move it on there this way, okay? See, there's still people walking. You don't need to be so close to me. Yeah, I do. I'm going to make sure you get out of here. You're going to go all the way back to that driveway right there. Okay? Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Well, I'll see you in court then, sir. So what? I haven't done anything. Yeah, you're moving me out of the way for, for freedom of recording you. That's what you're doing. I don't care if you're recording. You're going to do it back there. Let's pull off to see. 
for officer safety. Yeah, so you let those people go right by you. I had them on camera and you didn't let them move away. I didn't even know they were there, sir. Five freaking Keep going. Just... Keep going. He didn't know they were there. Detective Brown. Detective Brown? Yep. Right, I'll see you soon. Yeah. Wait, no I badge number. I lawsuit to get you, man. Not me. Yeah, you. No, no. You guys, yeah. No, not yeah. me. Alright, here we go. Well, let's do this again. You heard on the video, he told under oath to his, his partner that he gave me his badge number, and I came towards him, which I did not do. And he also lied and said he gave me his badge number. He did not give me his badge number. And I obviously walked at the same time as these people. And in this video, he says he didn't see them. Watch how close so close this is. Yeah, Joe, we gotta get out of here. We gotta go all the way back to that driveway right there. Alright, let's back to sub room. Here we go. See the people walking right there? One, two, three, four. He he didn't know they were there. You don't need to be so close to me. Yeah, I do. We're going to get out of here. We're going to go all the way back to that driveway right there. Okay? See the flashlight in my face? I'll see you in court then. He's flashing a flashlight in the camera yeah, to stop it from me seeing shit. Freedom of recording you. That's what you're doing. I don't care if you're recording You're going to do it back there. It's called officer safety. Officer safety? Yeah. So you let those people go right by you. I had them on camera. You didn't let them move away. I didn't even know they were there, sir. Five freaking Keep going. Keep going. Fucking douchebag. Fuck you, you unemployed Detective bitch. Detective You're unemployed Brown. bitch. Brown. Yep. Uh, I'll see you soon. Anyway, unemployed bitch. I have an active lawsuit against you, man. Not me. Yeah, you. Not you me. guys, yeah. No, no, not yeah. me, though. Yeah. So this is not far enough? No, the corner's far enough. Oh, the corner? Yep. So you're basically hindering me from getting anything that you had action I have a video in. camera with zoom on it. Get going. Zoom on it? Get your supervisor here right now. It's not working tonight. It's not working tonight. You don't have a supervisor tonight? I do, it's not working. Alright, then call the state police. You call them. You're, You're under citizen's anybody. arrest. No, Keep there going. you are. I'm Keep just going. putting you under citizen's arrest. Okay. Try to lean your finger on me, you should have to see it. Oh, is that a threat? Are you no. accosting me? No, no. Are you it's illegally going. accosting me? I'm warning you. That's not a warning, that's no. a threat, sir. No, it's not. Man, you need to learn who you're talking to, man. I know who I'm talking to. You do who? Okay. You're cool right here, dude. Who am I? Don't move. Well, it's up to me to determine my safety, sir. You just moved me out of the zone of free press. Okay, you just heard all of that, and now you're hearing his take on it. He did not give me his badge number. He actually lied. He lied. What a douche. What a douchebag. These cops are unbelievable. He said under oath on this video, on this audio, that he gave me his badge number. Not once in that video did he give me his badge number. And when I actually um, introduced myself to him, he was probably no more than four or five feet away. He was essentially um, as close as any of us would be while standing by, you know, on that stop of the investigation. Would you, as a police officer, consider that that distance that he was at be in a, in a safe spot? No, I personally would never let anyone that wasn't a policeman or, or involved in an investigation get that close. So why did he let the other four people go by? Like I said, I don't know who he, he was. Um, I can tell you based on my prior training, my experiences with these types of folks is we all know, or at least I know, that they're they're confrontational for the most part. You know. Okay, that's that's the line I'm concerned with. I don't know if you heard that because the video was uploading. For the purposes of this interview, we don't need a name. Um, did you have any contact with that person before? No. Did you have any idea uh, what that person's... So, um, you have the car stopped, and then Mr. Phillips, uh, it's, at one point you realize he's out there taping you, and you started to walk towards him and, and give him direction to, to move back? Yeah. How close was he, you said, when, the, when you first noticed him? How close was he to the, to the actual car stop? When I first noticed him, he was probably a good 10 or 20 feet away, which, I mean, I would obviously want him farther away, but at the time he wasn't really getting involved in anything, but then he started walking towards us where, you know, myself and all my partners were. He's walking on the sidewalk. The target of our investigation. And when I actually um, introduced myself to him, he was probably no more than four or five feet away. He was essentially 
um, as close as any of us would be while standing by, you know, on that stop of the investigation. Would you, as a police officer, consider that that distance that he was at be in a, in a safe spot? No, I personally would never let anyone that wasn't a policeman or, or involved in an investigation get that close just for safety. Oh, but he let five people go like right by him, almost touched him, even though he didn't see him. Um, I can tell you based on my prior training, my experiences with these types of folks is... Okay, with my experience and my prior training with these type of folks... Okay, this is the line that pisses me off. What's that? What's that training and constitute of? We all know, or at least I know, that they're they're confrontational for the most part. You know, they say they want to be there to to provide oversight into the government activities, but at the same time, they want to you know get in there and, and agitate or irritate. You know, and and he's obviously um, okay. His prior training teaches him that people like us. Okay, he's collectivizing me now. They agitate, and they cause they cause disturbances. Basically, is what he's saying. Um, his training. He said his training teaches him this. I'm gonna stop it right there. Um, this is JP from Cop Chases. Um, stay tuned to video three. Um, I'm chopping it up a little bit so the viewers don't get scared when they see like 25 minutes on a video. So I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, pick up right after I left off uh, right now and uh, do video three. This is JP, New England Cop Chases, and uh, the podcast, Good Morning to the State.